Via telephone, Art Tom, NRA lobbyist, represents West Virginia as well as some other states, uh, and he joins us via telephone right now. Good morning, Arthur. How are you? Good morning. How are you all doing today? We're well. Quite well, in fact. You're yeah. here today by request of my co-host, <laughs> Mr. Gilstrap. He said, Rob, I want to do a segment on Joe Biden and guns. And I said, I know just the guy to get on the program, John. Uh, <laughs> his, name, his name is Art Tom. That's why you're here. So good morning. Well, so good what, morning. What, what, what's your for issue? Me again. <laughs> what I've heard a rumor that with the uh, the Biden administration crackdown on uh, FFLs, federally fire, firearm licenses, that anybody who sells a gun, like I sell a gun to my neighbor, I am I now need to do background checks. Is is that true, or is that what they're pushing that, for? That's not- well, that's what they're essentially pushing for, but that's not true as of right now. Uh, you know, thankfully um, for gun owners, not only in the state of West Virginia, but across the nation, uh, this executive order that was issued by Joe Biden uh, could be accurately described as a mile wide and an inch deep. Um, you know, everybody's talking about, uh, you, you know, the, the, you see the gun control groups salivating over the idea that the measure would impose universal background checks. Um, meanwhile, all that did was uh, vaguely direct uh, A.G. Garland to develop a plan to move in that direction. When you talk about the FFLs, um, as, as you mentioned, uh, it, this doesn't really do anything other than direct uh, those, uh, you know, the, the alphabet soup of federal departments, the Justice, Health and Human Services, Education, Homeland Security, to comb through that misnamed Bipartisan Safer Communities Act that, uh, unfortunately, uh, some of our our own folks voted for. Um, we absolutely opposed that legislation. The vague language gave anti-gun officials uh, nebulous authorities uh, that I'm confident will be uh, abused to target law-abiding gun owners in a way that you spoke of. And what that is seeking to do is lowering the threshold for when an FFL, a federal uh, dealer of firearms, is needed to sell or transfer. Um, previously, an individual uh, only needed an FFL license or an FFL uh, when engaged in what's considered a course of trade or business, um, including uh, repetitive buying and reselling of firearms. And the principal objective had to be of livelihood and profit. Um, the uh, again, that uh, BCSA or I'm sorry, the BSCA, that uh, law that was passed removed the livelihood element so that profit seeking alone would fulfill the requirement. Now, it, uh, it did broaden the FFL requirement for sure, but it's far from clear what that means in a practical sense. Fortunately, uh, a course of repetitive buying, uh, and those are the, those are the key words, uh, course and repetitive buying and reselling of firearms is still necessary, but uh, no one seems to know where the lines are now drawn. And this seems to be a path we're following over and over again. It sort of started with the bump stock thing uh, under the, the Trump administration, where he, I, get, I think that was an executive order to ban uh, bump stocks. And now we've gone to the SIG, bra- the um, pistol bra- arm braces for, for pistols. I know those have all, the, uh, certainly the bump stocks have, has been challenged in the courts. And where does that stand? Okay, so... Um, it's still being challenged right now. The NRA has a challenge as well as uh, several other groups. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we expect that, that will, uh, will come in our favor at some point. Um, when it comes down to the, uh, to the arm braces, uh, we announced uh, with uh, A.G. Morrissey um, a month or so ago now um, a lawsuit on that as well. And uh, Patrick Morrissey, our attorney general, is leading a 25-state coalition um, to challenge that. So as it stands now, there's not a stay on any of that, right? So anybody with with an arm brace, 120 days from whatever it was passed sometime in January, they become felons, is that right? Yeah, uh, technically, but uh, we do expect a stay before that that timeline comes up. And there's some uh, oddities, even in the way that that's written, um, that make it intensely unclear. 
which are some of the uh, the merits to why we believe there will be a stay. I mean, it's just even if everything were constitutionally correct, there are technicalities that are just absolutely wrong within the uh, uh, you know the rule. So. I have a theory, and tell me if, if you agree, that I think a lot of these regulations the, the, done by executive order, it's well known. They understand that these won't stand up to court scrutiny, but they do it to have the, the campaign points. It's not really about making communities safer. It's about having stuff to talk about. Is, is that, is, does that sound reasonable? I mean... That is a, a point that I've tried to make, and uh, I know Rob has actually heard me make on this show probably a dozen or more times. I've said it all across this country in the states that I've lobbied. You know, politicians uh, will seek to find a way to uh, activate their base. Uh, and in this circumstance, it's, you know, guns are bad. Uh, they're killing our children. We need to take them off the street, um, you know, and, and that's just not the way that this is is, is going to work out, uh, you know. Unfortunately, it's the 400 and uh, you know million guns or whatever it is on the street. Uh, you know, the uh, the instance of it happening is is very low uh, in comparison to uh, you know what are out there. But when you say I'm going to take the guns off the street, that makes it a whole lot uh, easier. Sounds a whole lot better. Uh, than to be able to say, I'm going to address the actual problems of what is harming our communities. You know, looking at these urban metropolitan areas, uh, you know, where there's a uh, uh, high uh, drug use uh, uh, and activity, high gang activity, high unemployment, low education, uh, parenting issues where the, where the father's not in the picture and hasn't been. You know, these are, these are major, major uh, social issues that if we were to find a way to correct those, uh, all crime would drop, firearm crime included. Art Tom is our guest, the legislative lobbyist, representing a few different states, including West Virginia. Did you have another question, John? No, I, I just, I find this also very frustrating, the the drumbeat against the Second Amendment in, in general. Uh, it is, you know, we are endowed by our creator with certain unalienable rights, and that among these are the, you know, et, et, et cetera. Um, there's this sense that I find so frustrating that our our rights as enumerated in the Bill of Rights, which, by the way, tells a story. You know, if, if you look at the first 10 amendments there, it tells a story. We establish freedom of religion and speech and what have you to protect by our right to keep and bear arms by way of Third Amendment, keeping troops out of our homes so that Fourth Amendment, we don't have unreasonable search and seizure. And Fifth Amendment, we can't be forced to testify against ourselves. And Sixth Amendment, we have a right to a fair trial. And then Seventh Amendment deals with civil courts. And then the Eighth, we have make sure that we can protect our rights against excessive bail and cruel and unusual punishments. The, there is a story to be told. A progression of rights. And, and you can't just suspend one of them you know, the, the, the second of the 10, um, you can't just suspend one and say, well, that's, that's okay. You don't have, the government says that you can't do this thing um, with, without endangering all of the other rights that are enumerated in, in the Constitution. I don't understand why this is not self-evident to everybody. So I get frustrated. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I, I couldn't agree more. You know, and I, I've said that for a long time as well, that, you know, each right, is secured by the one uh, following it, right? You know, it's like, okay, we, we have the right to, uh, to say what we want. Uh, how, how are we going to figure that out? Well, you have the right to protect yourself. You know, it, it, I've said this so many times, and I wish people would understand it from the people that, are, that uh, oddly oppose me. You know, the, some of the people that oppose me are the exact same people that are going out every day talking about how for generations – uh, the government has been holding them down and has been, uh, you know, limiting their rights. And they say, but, you know, the government should be the only one that should, should possess firearms or the rights to, uh, to, to defend me. And I've said this several times. I'll say it again right now. The argument used to take my rights today absolutely will be used to take yours tomorrow. Art, let's talk about Campus Carry. Why were you able to get that through this year? Um, well, it was a uh, it, it was four years in the making. 
and um, you know we we had uh, I can't say the support of the uh, colleges and universities, but um, you know the opposition from the state colleges and universities was uh, was limited this year. You know the, the reality of the situation is that uh, it's a good law. You know everybody says well. We should be, uh, the opposition was saying kids should not be able to possess firearms on college campuses. And you know what? Kids are not going to be able to. These are all law-abiding adults. These are 18 and up uh, with a permit. And uh, it's already been law in the state of West Virginia that anybody could do it. You or I could do it uh, last week, last year, last four years, last 100 years. Um, And no repercussions whatsoever. But if you were a student or an employee, you would you could be disciplined up to it, including expulsion or termination of employment. Uh, that's just wrong. Uh, we you know discussed that over and over. We were able to further educate the legislature to to understand that. Uh, we were able to uh, you know work with the colleges and universities to get them to a point where um, I can't say they were at a point of neutrality, but they were as close as they could get, and uh, they understood uh, that uh, with our legislative makeup. Um, the the, uh, the agreement that was in place uh, this year was not likely to uh, to hold up in the future, and uh, so it was kind of they they it was the best they felt they could get at the time, and uh, and they and they took it. Yeah, that's that, the same explanation that I heard. Art was that they're resigned to the fact that this, with the overwhelming numbers, was finally going to pass this year, so they might as well find a way to accept it. I think. And I've talked to at least uh, one college professor who told me that uh, while there are those on staff who are not comfortable with this law, there are some who are grateful for the permission to carry. Because let's face it, banning students from carrying guns on campus isn't stopping the shootings on campus any more than it's stopping the shootings in the schools. So how are you going to That's deal right. with that? Are we, are we, are we going to have a, an armed police officer and metal detectors at every classroom? Or do we give people the fair opportunity to defend themselves because we haven't come up with a good solution for an alternative? So That's right. That's right. And, and, it, and it's not like uh, college campuses are not like uh, a K through 12 education system, right? It's not like you have one building that, uh, that houses all of the students They go in in the morning, they come out at the afternoon, they can lock that building and anybody from coming into it, right? It's Mm -hmm. it's not the same thing. You have to walk all over the place. And when you look at the circumstances of a state college uh, uh, campus, you have a uh, too many, way way too many instances, um, you know, where there has been a a shooting just recently at Michigan State University by a, a felon, someone who was not even supposed to be possessing a firearm, um, who was out on the streets because uh, a prosecutor deemed it uh, appropriate to let him out uh, after a firearms-related ch- uh, uh, charge. And then he goes onto a state college campus where he had no business being. He was not a, uh, a, uh, a student. He was not an employee. He was not uh, associated with anyone on the state college campus. And he went in and, and shot eight people killing three of them. And in Michigan, unlike West Virginia, it was, it is a felony to carry a firearm onto a, uh, onto a college campus. And if someone, if a, if a law-abiding adult was there with a firearm, there could have been a significant difference. The practicality of the law in West Virginia, Art, in regards to, let's say, a private university within, within the state's borders, do they still have the authority to say you can't bring a, a weapon into this classroom? Private, is that what you said? Yes, private college. Yeah, private college uh, is not included in this in this uh, legislation uh, because it is private property. Um, they still have the rights to be able to do, to do what they want to do. And, and look, so do the state colleges and universities. They can say they don't want firearms in any specific building. There are specific buildings and areas within the legislation that they, they are able to, uh, to, you know, make gun free, as if you will. Um, but they can do every dang building if they want to. The circumstances is they have to have a, uh, a law enforcement officer 
and a metal detector at the doors so that they actually ensure that the area is gun-free. That's the condition for restricting the carrying of firearms in a particular building on a state-funded public college campus now, right? That's correct. Yep. Okay. It, it's it, Look, protect me or allow me to protect myself. Bingo. So in the private colleges, the the demand that we can't go into building four with, with firearms, does that have the force of law? Is it then a crime to carry a gun into building four anyway? No, it's not. So uh, it's not, and it, and it wasn't on, uh, on state uh, colleges or university campuses. It's not on private. Uh, there's nothing in the law that, uh, that, that states that uh, you, you cannot do it. Um, and actually, uh, if you were, even, e- even with this law, um, uh, if you go onto a state college cam- campus or a private and uh, someone sees you with a firearm and they say, hey, we'd prefer you not to have one here, as long as you leave, you've committed no crime. Um, if you don't, then they could uh, trespass you. And you could be, uh, you know, law enforcement could be called, you could be cited for trespassing, things of that nature. But the, uh, that's, as, that's really as far as it could go. Um, now, again, if uh, you violate provisions of this specific piece of legislation on a state college campus, um, then, uh, and you're an employee or a, uh, or a student, which is, again, who this law actually, in the end, protected, then you could be facing disciplinary action by the state college or university um, as it was before the law would take effect. Now, for students, if I understand this right, it's, it's all tied to having a concealed carry permit, right? It's, constitutional carry does not apply in this case for students to carry on campus. Is that right? That's correct. Yep. It, in order to be able to carry on to a state college or uni, uh, campus, uh, state college or university campus, you have to have a concealed carry permit. Um, if you, especially if you are a, uh, a student or a faculty member, and you're seeking protections under the law, which are protections from being uh, uh, dis- facing disciplinary action. Uh, well, again, uh, you or I could do it today, tomorrow, and it's not going to affect it like it did before. Again, the only thing that they could do is ask us to, to leave or take our firearm back to our car and lock it up out of sight. Um, if you don't, again, you could face uh, trespassing concerns. Which means everybody who's involved in this has gone through their background check. They've got a criminal background check. They've, they've passed it. They've actually, in order to get a concealed carry in, Virgi- in uh, West Virginia, there's even a live fire uh, requirement, albeit kind of <laughs> not terribly strenuous. But um, so it, it's we're looking at folks who who have passed criminal background checks and therefore should I mean, if they're able to, to determine the fate of the free world, why not be able to protect themselves? Absolutely. Yep, that's exactly right. And yep, that's one of the things that, you know, I even discussed with, uh, uh, you know, those on the other side of the aisle, the, uh, uh, you know, there's uh, anti-gun groups, uh uh, you know, that's uh, the Brady group, the Giffords group, uh, Moms Against Everything. You know, these folks come out and they say, well, we're not against the Second Amendment. We're not against you protecting yourself or having the ability to do so. We just want people that are that have went through background checks and have went through training. And if you did that, we're okay. So we say, okay, we, we look, we've given you that. And they go, well, you know what? We've changed our mind now. We, we, we don't actually prefer the Second Amendment. We just forget to actually say that when it's appropriate. So, uh, yes, it meets all those thresholds. These are safe people. These are across the, uh, uh, the country in every statistic you can find, the safest people, uh, including that of members of law enforcement. You know, the, the uh, people with concealed carry permits statistically are safer uh, members of the community than law enforcement, which is uh, an oddity. I, I, I agree, but it is, it is what it is. Yeah, the, uh, the I remember the fear when when that law was passed. Art was that every day would be like a day at the OK Corral. Uh, that you know, we're, just because you had a gun, that you we were going to have a every time somebody got upset driving a car, we were just going to pull over and start shooting up the neighborhood. Uh, and and you know, w- when you have a gun, there's the reason why you have it. Hopefully, you never have to use it. And there are people who do use them irresponsibly, and we hear about them in the news every day, including yesterday, uh, as well. And This is a complicated, complex issue, and nobody's figured out a way to solve it. So until then, I don't 
see why the fair response to this is restricting my ability to defend myself from the nutcases that are out there who don't act responsibly. I don't I don't get yeah, I don't right. get the angle of penalizing people who are trying to defend themselves against the nut bars out there. Yeah, that's right. And you know, I know you and I have talked about this uh, previously as well. Uh, you know, back during the constitutional carry days when that law passed, and now this law, uh, heck, during the uh, the preemption and right to carry laws originally, you know, where people said that you know blood was going to be running through the streets. There's going to be all kinds of stuff happening. In this case, in th in this specific case, <laughs> what we heard was. Well, so what happens now when you get a bad grade? Somebody just stands up and shoots the professor, and it's like, what? Yes. Uh, who does that? It, this is a, and uh, you know, I'm sure there's a, a psychologists, psychiatrists that, that listen to the show, and they can they can call in and speak to this much greater than me. But this is absolute projection theory, where these people, for some odd reason, they believe in their mind that if someone were to cut them off in the street. Or if, someone, if a professor were to give them an F that they don't feel like they deserve, they would stand up and shoot this person. That's the only thing that I can even come to uh, any logical sense. And it's like, man, you, just because you're crazy, just because you can't handle your emotions doesn't mean that the, 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 the vast majority of firearms owners or law-abiding citizens are that way. It's just, it just doesn't work that way. Uh, Art, uh, as we run out of time here, what's next on your legislative agenda in West Virginia, if anything, at this date? Uh, we're, you know, the uh, legislative session just ended. Um, we have a, uh, you know, some some follow up over the uh, the off season, if you will, um, to help the uh, state colleges, universities implement this uh, this new law. Um, we're, you know, obviously willing to do that as as uh, deep as they want us to be involved with it. Um, outside of that, it's way too early to uh, to speculate what our legislative priorities may be moving into next session. Very good. Appreciate your participation this morning, Arthur. Have a great day. And uh, again, thank you kindly.